we open on this goddamn jackrabbit who keeps getting into my garden frickety frick frick little bastard you yeah get the hell out of here god damn it anyway i just think he's eating all my greens off of my off of my sweet potatoes Ooh. but these tomatoes are looking good anyway hi who the heck am i um hi it's me again with another vintage homestead video hello willow's vintage homestead i am willow as you may have guessed so um tomatoes are looking good i think i'm gonna pick some of these tomatoes but what's really cool is that randomly <laughs> i planted this garden you may have watched the stone wall video here's the top of the stone wall from the other angle i have i have sweet potatoes in here um i've got some yellow squash which actually let me check on these <laughs> oh yeah i'm getting some yellow squash coming this is Craig's favorite is the yellow squash. I've also got gophers. Uh, you know, I mean, part of this being in the wilderness and such is that y you're going to get gophers and rabbits and whatever. And it's like, it's kind of slightly a losing battle, but y you kind of also give up some of that to them. And it's, I, it's fine. You know what? It's, it's fine. <laughs> so, anywho, um, random kabocha squash which our volunteers completely um just sprouted up in the middle of this and they're actually like super delicious so i'm, I'm just gonna make soup tonight out of uh one of these guys that i got that was like twice this size but these aren't quite ready yet um the stem should be kind of pithy although they have lost their sheen they're, they're getting kind of more of a dry color or dry uh, texture, which is what you want. Um, they start out looking very much like little, those little uh, uh, round zucchini, but anyway, I'm kind of rambling today. But here's some mint that I planted and a couple more little sad tomatoes. Those aren't doing very well, but eh, whatever, you know, you plant enough tomatoes, you'll get one guy that performs well for you. And this is Black Prince and it's doing pretty good it's like probably almost four feet tall so I'm happy with that but the other thing I want to show you today is some old recipes I went um, to an antique shop yesterday because I was looking for a very specific thing let me show you that thing I was looking for a bucket or pail or something about this size vintage enamel and I found this at an antique shop, which I was hoping I would. Um, the inside's kind of a little damaged, but that's okay, because I'm actually gonna be using it for making my baskets, and I just thought this was so cute. Little wooden handle, this red edge, and the blue you know, speckle, you know, I guess it's called speckleware, I don't know, whatever it's called. I, I just thought it was cute. And I'm gonna put my basket materials in there to soak. Hopefully I'll do, uh, you know, some dem demonstrations at either Living History Day or at the local museum. And, um, yeah, that's just what I was looking for. And I also found, I also found this cool book. And I was just going through the, the antique store. I had no intention of getting something like this. But I like to collect vintage cookbooks because the recipes are interesting. It's kind of a picture of people's lives from another time, which is really fun you know which is of interest to me and I thought this you know a sure guide for every bride I think I mean stuff like this you know it's, it's just hilarious and you look at the artwork I'll set that aside for a second look at the artwork and it is from it is from 1931 and you can tell look at that art deco green and black looks like the Emerald City looks like the Wizard of Oz right I love it so not only that the cover of this pictorial review book is washable. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's great. And it was $5 and I thought, okay, I have to get this. This is, this is fantastic. But not only are there recipes here that I'm going to make at some point, not probably the liver one, but others. Um, but I found this inside there 
and it's Grandma Nelson's Recipes 1940s. I have not looked in this yet. I just wanted to do this for you guys for discovery, and I'm like gonna check this out right now. So, literally, I have not looked inside this envelope. I it was inside the book. I Aunt Ida's Recipes Pictorial Cookbook Two. Choice recipes using California avocados. A luscious semi-tropical fruit with many uses. <laughs> New recipes. Surprise rice. Okay, sure. <laughs> that was a surprise, you're right. That is a surprise. Garden succotash with lima beans. I like lima beans. A lot of people don't like lima beans, but I like lima beans. So I'm really curious, Grandma Nelson's Recipes, 1940s. I can't wait to see what's in here. What is in here? These are very good donuts. <laughs> Sour milk, melted butter, soda, salt, baking powder, grated nutmeg. Ooh, interesting. And how you do sour milk, if you don't actually want to use actual sour milk, I don't recommend it, is you put a tablespoon of vinegar in and then fill it in uh, with milk to make up however much. So you put in a tablespoon or so, a little more maybe, and then enough milk to make up one and a third cups. That's how you get sour milk without making actual sour milk. Uh, let's see, what else is in here? See, if my kitchen wasn't such a disaster, I would probably make these on camera. Good sweet pickles, hey. And then on the other side, we have date cookies. Oh yeah, icebox cookies. Oh, I gotta try those. Date cookies, that sounds amazing. Let's see, what else? Thank you, uh, Grandma Nelson. I wonder who gave up this book? How sad it is that this is disconnected from that family. Oatmeal loaf. Shortening, quick cooking meal. Uh, orange juice. Okay, so it's not like a savory loaf. It's like a loaf bread that is like oatmeal bread. Uh, oh, this looks very good. I will make that and test it out. Now let's check out Aunt Ida's recipes. Rice stuffing for goose. Rice stuffing for goose. We have casserole potato souffle mixed with electric beater. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> Bank of America. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> what, what is this from? Driven by duty, drawn by love. I, you know, you, it's, it's little pieces of people's lives and that fascinates me. Like why is it on the back of a Bank of America letter anyway? Cottage cheese pie. Cottage cheese put through a sieve, four eggs, milk, cornstarch, sugar, grated rind of a lemon. What? Then bake in a crust. What in the world? I, I'm, I am baffled. Okay, all right, interesting. And we've got date nut pudding, cream of potato soup. Hey, that sounds good. And then here's some, you know, on, some old newspaper clippings, that's always fun. Uh, sugarless canning, and then there's some advice about that. I don't know if I wanna hear that. Uh, carrot pudding. See, stuff like this, obviously I'm not gonna use the suet, you can. If you want to see these recipes written out, I will type them out uh, and put them in the comments for you later if, if people want that. Um, but I would use like, um, you know, hard vegetable shortening, Crisco, something like that. Carrots, potatoes, flour, chopped raisins. Wow, it's like it's like um, 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 uh, mincemeat kind of, which I love, by the way. Carrot walnut loaf. Christian witness to Israel, March 1940. Ha, <laughs> we have a date. Look at that. So now we know when this paper is from. And we have a vegetarian hamburger. Break three eggs in a bowl, add oats, yep, yep, bread crumbs, puffed rice, onion, thyme, sage, two tablespoons solid fat, which I gotta think is like Crisco, because if it's vegetarian, right? And then a can of, a, a can of tomato juice, can of mushroom sauce. A can of mushroom sauce. Well, anyway. 
I'll have to try some of those. Now, I also brought out my own recipe since we're talking about old recipes today. Um, I brought out some of my own from my grandmother that I never knew. This is my recipe box here. There's a lot of recipes. A lot are out of magazines and, and such, but, um, you know, like some of these, you know, are out of, out of magazines. But something like this, here's one that is from my grandma Wilma marble cake. That's her mother's recipe. So this is my great grandmother's marble cake recipe. I have made this recipe before. And again, if you want it, I will put it in the comments and I'm happy to, uh, to share that with you. Uh, here's my mom's potato salad. It's kind of a hot mess. <laughs> I can write it out and make it more, um, you know, sensical than what is here, but I make this all the time. It's really, really, really good. But I have a separate card in here that is just Grandma Wilma's recipes. Um, I've set these aside. My sister Karen has the other half, but I, I got half, she got half. We just kind of went, um, I don't know, have these, sure, and, and did that and, and uh, divided it up like that. So I've got raisin rice pudding. You can see these are very old cards um, written, you know, from another time in another handwriting. So we've got caramels or caramels, mother's recipe, soft ginger cake, mother's recipe. So these are my great grandmother's, you know, uh, recipes. Most of these I have not tried. And again, if my kitchen wasn't in such an absolute disaster, <laughs> I would make these on camera. But what I might do is make some of these new ones I just got. Um, Grandma Nelson, <laughs> oh, I don't know who that is, and Aunt Ida, and, and see how they are. And then make some recipes out of this I have some other really cool old cookbooks uh, from the 1930s uh, and older. I have some from, uh, I think, the 1890s that is, uh, has recipes in there. Um, and I'm always looking at, you know, of course, the cakes and the cookies because, you know, who doesn't like that? So I might just um, cave in and, and straighten up my kitchen, which is a good excuse to straighten up my kitchen anyway, and, and kind of go through some of these. Um, you know, and I'm going to put these right back where I found them, right back in this book to keep that all together. And there you go. So there you go. That was a fun little trip on just two things that I found uh, this weekend at uh, an antique store. And um, I just thought I would share those things. Let me know if you want to see the recipes uh, in, in the chat. Subscribe, share, like all those things that you're supposed to do on YouTube and stuff. Uh, and let me know which recipe you'd like to see or what type of recipe. Do you wanna see cake, cookies, biscuits, vegetarian burger loaf? I mean, <laughs> all these things, especially depression era stuff, you know, when they didn't have a whole lot of meat, they would use oats to make, you know, extend the meat or to make, uh, uh, you know, a meatless loaf, that type of thing. So. It's fun, um, you know, it's the kind of thing that you find um, at, uh, at tag sales and yard sales and thrift stores and antique stores and, and such. I mean, I think five bucks for that book's a pretty good deal. So anyway, see you next time on Willow's Vintage Homestead. Um, stay cool and cook some cool old recipes because you never know what you're going to find. Bye.